Um, my name is Nick Leeson. Um, I'm probably most well known for my part in the collapse of Barron's Bank in 1995. My name is Soji Apampa and I'm one of the founders of the Convention on Business Integrity. In these events, what we do, we have a keynote speaker who sets the scene in order to get people thinking. But this year, our special guest of honor is the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, who is also the co-founder of the Convention on Business Integrity. And the, um, the guest of honor would be um, His Excellency, um, uh, Mr. Ambody, who's the executive governor of Lagos State, and we're really looking forward to having a policy debate and some thinking around it as being the follow-up steps after um, the, the lecture. Hopefully, um, in, a, in a few months, we can have some kind of dialogue with the government on the issue of how to prevent corruption. I mean, the, the thing for me all of the time is to share my story in, in, as I said, in the most honest and candid way that I can. And it's a, it's a story of, um, you know, exceptionally poor corporate governance and a system that broke down um, and that I was able to take advantage of ways that it broke down. I mean, some people think that I saw weaknesses in the system and took advantage of them deliberately, but it's a story really of, I, you know, I expected a knock on the door every minute of every day to stop what I was doing and it just never came because the system wasn't working. So it's about putting those ro robust, effective controls in, in place, make sure that you know your people, that you support your people, but equally that you challenge them and you challenge the system. And if the system is robust and effective, uh, then it will keep everybody safe and it's, it, it's those sort of messages and they're very, you know, there's a lot of personal messages as well as there being a lot of organisational messages and I think you described my speeches as motivational, I, I, I don't think of them in that way, it's just, a, a, you know, it's just me telling stories but I do think that a lot of people leave the talks that they give and go back to their own organisations and look to structure something slightly differently than they have previously. The Convention on Business Integrity um, is a business membership organization that promotes anti-corruption business coalitions that come together in order to be able to use collective action in the fight against corruption. Because we believe that in a place like Nigeria, where government is not able always to deal with corruption, get a handle on corruption, and business is not able always to self-regulate in the way that they ought to do, and activists are not always able to hold governments or business to account, therefore you need some kind of collective action where all three, government, business and civil society, come together to do something about corruption. Well, I think what they try, what the organisation is, is doing and what the Convention on Business Integrity is doing is, is to be absolutely applauded. I mean, one of, one of the most difficult questions I got asked many years ago, and I was in South Africa at the time, was, you know, why was my moral compass so narrow? And I've never been asked, I've spoken around the world for nearly 20 years now, and I've never been asked a question like that. And I had to sit back and actually think because I always like to give an honest answer, so I actually had to sit back and think about it for a minute. And you know, I and I'd, I'd never been asked the question in that way. But you know, I became very blinkered and very focused on what I was doing, and, and, and not considering how it was impacting other people. Um, you know, how it was impacting shareholders, how it was impacting the people that I worked for, or, or the people that worked for me. It was just very much about surviving day by day. And, and trying to get myself back to a situation where I could walk away and everything was okay. What I didn't realise was that I was just compound, compounding the problem all of the time. Um, but you know, that's I think anybody or, or any organisation that is trying to promote best practice within any industry, I think needs to be applauded and encouraged.
as part of the Convention on Business Integrity, for our members, because it was it's a voluntary organization, um, our members have a code of business integrity that they sign up to, and we had a rating system that we use to um, determine how far along the road of compliance they had traveled. But after like 10 years of doing this, we had only 20 signatories and we felt, well, it's all well and good having a small club of people, but until we're able to share these ideas across the entire private sector, we won't be able to make the kind of impact that we would like to make or have the kind of influence that we would like to have. So we, we, we started talking to the authorities, which was the Securities and Exchange Commission. We also started talking to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. In the end, um, after the crash, the collapse of the stock market, it became clear to many actors that corruption was and poor corporate governance were the key reasons why um, there was the vulnerability in the markets that led to the crash. We also managed. We also managed to arrive on the scene with the Nigerian Stock Exchange at the time when they also were considering how to shore up confidence in the exchange and how to build what they call a premium board and launch a premium board. And that's when we brought our lessons from our rating system and used it to develop a corporate governance rating system in partnership with the stock exchange. Today, it is now the standard for any company wishing to be listed in the premium board of the stock exchange. It has become part of the rules that has been given by the Securities and Exchange Commission um, um, for, for getting listed on that segment of the market. And it has now become compulsory for all listed companies to be um, rated using this corporate governance rating system. So as a way of measuring how far companies and how compliant companies are with provisions for curbing corruption, I would say that that is one major achievement that we have um, managed to score um, since, since we were founded. The first thing is the government has done well um, in highlighting the need to go after those who have been acting with impunity. So we've seen lots of court cases. We've seen court cases. We've also seen um, attempts to hold people accountable. But we believe that that is good, but not enough. We also need to prevent. Otherwise, at the end of four years, you will have a new set of people that the next government will have to run after. And also, um, the public is not sufficiently engaged. So this year's Christopher Collar Day lecture on business integrity, and this is the fifth of the series, we thought it would be wise to talk about the gaps in our national strategy and to see whether many more will agree with us that prevention is actually better than cure. There are things we can do to make sure that the corrupt don't get away with it in the first place and that there isn't as much room for corruption rather than spend our time and efforts chasing after those who have made away with our commonwealth. I totally disagree with people who say corruption is our culture and that corruption is our mindset. I totally disagree with them because you, from the kinds of research that we have done, we found that you will find maybe 5% or so of Nigerians who will be criminal and corrupt regardless of what you do. You will also find another 5% at the other end of the spectrum who will never, ever get involved even if it kills them. But you've got the majority of people who are fungible and they are malleable and they can be persuaded in either way depending on what they call survival. So many people go along with the status quo simply because they feel they don't have the strength. And that's where we come in. For example, in business, many business people believe that there's no other way to grow your business if you try to stand against it. And we, we believe that alignment of incentives with doing the right thing is what is missing. 
So, for instance, in the corporate governance rating system that I talked about, um, many of the companies are seeing that the way to woo investors and to attract the kind of funding that they need is to demonstrate their credentials as companies who are limiting corruption and who are being governed properly that it is beginning to matter and therefore many of them are realigning with that cause simply because there is a carrot at the end of it not just a stick we believe that for ordinary people take for example smes if you told smes that they could get grants through the central bank if they can prove that they are not part of the corruption that is going on the next question they'll ask you is how can i prove that and you tell them you need to put this in place put that in place these three things we have to see it i promise you many people will go and do those three things you, you understand so i do not believe that nigerians are inherently corrupt it is that we have not a given them the incentives because also when it comes to sanctions we have also proven that we are unable to sanction bad behavior so where there isn't incentives and there's no sanction it's a free for all so strengthening that regime where you can put some incentives in place to prevent then you start to get some traction even government officials supposing you said to to government officials that over and above your budget releases if you you put certain reforms in place that support the anti-corruption agenda then you can come back for an extra budgetary provision in order to shine even better and those who are unable to demonstrate that they have reformed well we will only release so much to them we will check how they use it and then release a bit more check how they use it no chief executive officer will like to be in that situation where they're being monitored and being given the money piecemeal so you're then providing incentives for people to think about the reforms so again it's about thinking deeply about the problem and finding another way to align um, prevention in the fight against corruption it is very important you know in Nigeria many people imagine that um, the only reason why people get punished for corruption is because they don't share what they steal and that if you are ready to share what you steal then that's all you need to, to know about corruption and you, you don't want to be on the wrong side of the political spectrum when you're doing that so if you're in with with the with the party in power and you share then nothing will happen to you but they forget that you can actually bring the entire system down and that if everybody is gaming the system you can bring the entire financial system in nigeria to collapse it's not about you it's about nigeria and it's bigger than the individuals who are getting involved in corruption so what better way to demonstrate that, that fact than to have a real life example from elsewhere of what has happened when people ignored the fact that the actions of one individual can actually damage an entire institution. How much more in a place like Nigeria where there are many individuals doing things to damage institutions and they think that there will be no other result apart from them getting away with their crimes and um, them sharing some of the money that they have stolen. Excellency, the Acting President, the 
professor Demi Oshibajo, SAN, GCON. Her Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, representing His Excellency the Governor, Mrs. Zuluanti Adebule. His Excellency, or at least as he used to be, Dr. Christopher Kolade, a distinguished honorary this uh, evening. Uh, our special guest or uh, keynote speaker, Nick Leeson, and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's my high honor and privilege to welcome you all to this fifth edition of our Christopher Kolade lecture. The MC has given us some of the background to the lecture in honor of a man many of us have found on our pathways in life and selected as our mentors and who we have all chosen to adopt as a role model. Certainly for us in the Convention on Business Integrity, Dr. Kolade has been a shining light and it is in honor of him that we instituted this series of lectures by this. On behalf of the country director of the United Nations Development Program in Nigeria, Dr. Samuel Boya, who would have loved to be a part of this event, but for another engagement outside the country, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to the organizers of this special event in honor of Dr. Christopher Kolade for extending an invitation to the United Nations Development Program in Nigeria so that we could collectively reflect on the virtues of selfless service, integrity, and excellence in business. I wish to also commend the leadership and staff of the Integrity Organization for the effective planning of this event. With the team, prevention is better than cure, even on the issue of corruption, which is relevant to the Nigerian context today. Prevention, which is often the less explored pathway by anti-corruption institutions, addresses the causes rather than the symptom of corruption. It addresses the protest attitudinal and behavioral issues and seeks to win heart and mind to the anti-corruption cause. Whilst the prosecutorial measures assure of immediate success, it is the preventative approach that ensures that the success is sustainable. Your Excellencies, Permit me to end this statement by pledging you and this continued support to the government and people of Nigeria in strengthening pre preventative anti-corruption measures. We look forward to the sharing of innovative ideas on the promotion of business integrity through prevention of corruption in the private sector this evening. We thank you for your kind attention. Your Excellency, the Acting President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Deputy Governor of Lagos State, uh, Dr. Christopher Kolade, our honorary, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. To many Nigerians, it is clear that there is corruption in Nigeria. But where the debate is, is where exactly you will find this corruption. Many Nigerians believe that it is the public figures especially in government, they are the ones who are responsible for corruption. So they believe that if you manage to round them all up and put them in jail, corruption will cease and our lives would be better. But nothing could be further from the truth. Why? This is because Nigerians typically fail to see the implications of their own behavior. Parents who pay off invigilators so that their children can be assisted to cheat in examinations. They want to be able to say, my child is the youngest graduate. They want to be able to say that their child at least appears to be bright, to be smart, all on a lie. They teach their children to look good by any means possible employing every shortcut that they can buy. Sadly, they are unable to link 
their unchecked risky behavior to the rising number of women that are dying in childbirth because of incompetent care. The misdiagnosis of medical conditions lead, leading to unnecessary deaths of countless Nigerians. They can't see the connection. Um, because if you don't have deterrent, 
uh, then any of the controls or the laws or the rules that you have are meaningless and people will continue to step over a line. So I was very correctly punished uh, for my uh, crimes in Singapore and spent four and a half years in prison uh, for my actions over that period. From the banking uh, side of things, obviously the bank uh, suffered the most catastrophic effect and uh, went into liquidation and was sold for one pound to ING. Especially with respect to critical economic 
individuals is gradually responsible for the difficult situation we have found ourselves today. Let me start by thanking the integrity organization and the Convention on Business Integrity for their work in promoting transparency and highlighting the debilitating impact of corruption in public and especially business life in Nigeria. The groundbreaking work that you have done with the Convention, especially recently with the work that you are doing with TAPE and with uh, the Stock Exchange and all of the other excellent work that has been done deserves our commendation. Our special uh, gratitude again must go to the man for whom this lecture series is most deservedly named, Dr. Christopher Kolade, who over the course of an outstanding life in both public and private sectors has embodied the spirit of unassailable integrity and has set personal professional examples which has become a beacon for many of us. We want to thank you for, for desiccating this very, very many years, for tolerating many of us who just generally hang around you and insist that you do something or the other. We really thank you very much. Mr. Kwebe Agwadi, who took over from me as chairman last year, and has done an excellent job of steering the board of the Integrity Organization. And of course, Mr. Sajia Pampan, co-founder, and currently Executive Vice Chairman and CEO of the Convention on Business Integrity, otherwise known as the very Reverend Sauji Apakala. <laughs> Thank you for your deep and abiding commitment to the timeless values of ethics, transparency, and integrity. The theme of this year's event is Prevention is Better Than Care. When three centuries ago, the American statesman and thinker Benjamin Franklin wrote these words, quote, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of care, end of quote. He was actually speaking in the context of domestic fires, fire incidents, a pressing issue at that time, and he was offering valuable advice to the public about how to prevent them. In the time since then, altruism has come to be applied to practically everything. Healthcare, education, climate change, <coughs> infrastructure, and all of that, to mention just a few. Today, at this forum, we are discussing it in the context of corruption, a context which, in which it is as valid and as necessary as any other. And we are making the case that preventing corruption from happening in the first place is much smarter, more effective, and certainly cheaper than trying to deal with it after the fact. Permit me to share just some of my own experiences in public, in public uh, service, highlighting the lessons, some of the lessons I've learned regarding this theme, as well as some of the efforts that uh, the federal government has made at elevating corruption prevention strategies over the search for chaos. In the last two years, in my service as Vice President of Nigeria, I've overseen a lot of work which has been done on fighting corruption, especially around asset recovery. And I've seen a lot of evidence to support the argument that preventing corruption is far better than trying to undo the terrible impact that corruption has in systems and on our society. In our investigations into defense spending, for example, uh, and that investigation took a considerable period of time. We discovered a whole of something on the order of about $15 billion. Now that $15 billion in spending that cannot uh, be accounted for, for some, for some context, our entire federal budget for 2017 is approximately $24 billion. So $15 billion of unaccounted for military spending with no guarantee that we'll ever be able to recover everything is an order of the kind of damage that was done by that, uh, by that series of corrupt actions. As anyone who has ever worked in this area of asset recovery can tell you, it is costly and it's extremely slow. You have to engage forensic consultants.
consultants and experts have to be hired and paid for. And even then, you only have some hope that perhaps you, know, you may be able to recover some of what has been lost. In many cases where the funds are abroad, the process of repatriation is so slow and sometimes this is on account of sovereign reluctance. Many countries are, of course, reluctant to return money, even stolen money. And this is an experience that we found time and time again. In some other cases, legal obstacles of every kind are introduced to ensure that you don't get back the money. So today we have something in the order of about a billion or so US dollars in identified proceeds of corruption in foreign banks that were struggling to repatriate. And then, of course, there's the opportunity cost of stolen public funds. A long list of what ifs. You know, what if we were able to do something with the money? What if we were able to get some benefit from that money before it disappeared? Now, for example, if we had the kind of money that we, had, that we lost, what if we had instead invested half or even a third of the um, accounted for money in our sovereign wealth fund. What if some of that money had gone into boosting our reserves and enabled us to face the period of the oil slump with an extra, say, $10 billion in foreign reserves? Secondly, our, for, our, our exchange rate would not be where it is today if we had that kind of money in our reserves at the time when the oil slump came <coughs> and when production fell by close to a million barrels a day. Think how different our economic trajectory would have been over the last 18 months. What if we spend the money on our Lagos to Calabar rail project or Lagos to Kano rail project? We are borrowing now something in the order of about $10 billion from the China exit to be able to prosecute uh, these two rail projects. So all around us lies evidence that corruption, like health epidemics, is a much cheaper problem to prevent than to kill. Just as polio leaves a permanent disability, the negative impact of full-blown corruption on human lives and development of our societies will never be fully reversible. So I will make every effort possible to recover what has been lost and to try and cure the deadly disease that is corruption. It's important that we are focusing just as much attention, if not more, on preventing it from happening in the first place. It's of course a given that people will generally seek to test the limits of corruption set by the state and the laws of the land. So the more elastic these limits are, the greater the confidence with which they will be breached. It's therefore incumbent on, all, on us, especially as government, to continuously seek to tighten and to enforce those limits and to minimize the space within which impunity can occur. I think in the past two years, we've, we've demonstrated that we are committed to making it harder than ever for government funds to be stolen or diverted. Early on in the administration, in August 2015, President Buhari issued an order mandating immediate compliance by federal ministries and agencies with what was then called the tre what is called the Treasury Single Account System, the TSA. What the TSA does is that it simplifies government accounting by ensuring that there is a central system of limits. And I think that, just as I said earlier, corruption is what it is. We mustn't allow it, we mustn't allow anyone to describe it as anything other than what it is. If we delegitimize corruption, all of us will be uh, the, the better for it. So once more, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, especially the Convention on Business Integrity for the a great opportunity of being able to come by uh, again and to say that uh, the excellent work you're doing is worthy of commendation and I pray and I hope that this tribe of people who are committed to fighting corruption will not die, that it will increase day by day.
Welcome to yet another edition of Personal Jewelry on Ben TV. I mean, we don't do it just to say that uh, it's high time. You know, we as Nigerians, we can pack past the buck as much as we want. Blame somebody else. And the sooner we realize that, the better for us. There is an objective problem because Nigeria, thanks to the dollars who have governed for a long time. What about those who manages the airline? Are we training them? The answer is no. We established the concept of governance, of good governance, and just create a new society. And, and that's the evidence you see. Nigeria is the first producer of cocoa in the entire world. Interestingly, Ondo State produces about 30% of Nigeria's output in terms of cocoa. We want to leverage on that. We've seen ourselves taking quite a few things we made on ground to completion levels, initiating new areas, putting new things we intend to take to completion levels before the end of our term. We reject jungle justice in its entirety. There is no place for it under the law, and whosoever participate or allowed jungle justice uh, to be uh, done around him, we face the wrath of the law. What brought you into politics and what are you doing presently in politics? Well, I came into politics because I, I looked at the old scenario and I found out that the majority of the people are running away from politics. All of those people responsible for pardoning the ministries, it will be difficult now for this group of people to feel that they'll be safe even if they part. My brother, if you see the obscene amount of money that these governors are taking as security vote, you will weep for this nation. That's a, 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 another, if it's another way of stealing Nigeria's wealth. If we have so much religious institution, we have so much churches, we have so much mosque, who are the people going to all of these uh, establishments? They are human beings, they are people that are working in the different parastatals that we are crying about. So that means the messages they are hearing in the churches and the mosques, they are not impacting their lives. There's something is wrong with the system. I therefore pray for every woman watching right now for grace for you to rise up and be the best you can be for God so you can be an influence in your community. Prophecy is not to create panic or tension, but it's to warn you against impediment due ahead of you. Nigeria does not have a constitution. The constitution we have in this country is totally flawed. They should go and treat what Zaraki for before they start accusing any other person in the house. He should be jailed, not even sacked. Today, Vice Barry, you've been very consistent in uh, matters of uh, uh, public policy. And of course, we appreciate you for coming on our program today. Interesting program. Hope you enjoyed it like I enjoyed it as well. Keep watching. Personalities with Larry. Yeah, we told you bringing it. Your boys in action on this one. J.E. Hacks is one of my life for deep production. Let's go. Oh, don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil screw you because of a little. So, yeah, my kid, your caller. This is the bear. Saya, oh, my daddy. Saya, you know, you know the Saya. Come on everybody, why not try go try and come But don't give up, if you try he he would, he would delay Just watch out, pray this I will thank him, this I will praise him, this I will do all things My God, dance with me, my God, sing with me, my God, shake it with me On the people, the heart, let's dance, let's dance, let's dance Oh, don't let the devil fool you, don't let the devil screw you because of a little Suya, Marche, Joe, Cole, this is to be a Saya, Omo, Uta, Desire, you know, you know the Saya, Marche, Joe, Cole, Lord, I will trust in you, Lord, I will lay down you, for the things that you have done, I will praise you too, but every day, the day just to treat me on, when I know go ever, never give the chance to rain. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil screw you. 
speak of some lead to Suya, Marshall, your father, just to be a Saya, Omota, desire, you know, you know the Kaya, Marshall, your father, don't let the devil fool you, don't let the devil screw you, because of a lead to Suya, Marshall, your father, just to be a Saya, Omota, desire, you know, you know the Kaya, Marshall, your father. You know how we do? Fire. Your boy's the next one on this one. Jay Hex. It's more than my life for. The whole world stand up. Greek stand up. Nigeria stand up. Keep it green and keep it struggling. Whatever you are in life, you just know just press on. You can make it. I know I can make it too. God, strength me. I can't do it alone. Go with me, Lord. Come on. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't let the devil screw you. Because of little suya, match it your color. Just to be a fire. Oh, my daddy. Fire. You know, you know this. Fire. Match it your color.